Hello, Kidney Warriors. This is James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is Dadvice TV Live on a Tuesday, November 7th, voting day. So those of you here in the U.S. that are eligible to vote, I hope you took the time and voted today or you're planning to do it right after this broadcast. Really important to leverage that right and go out there and vote. All right, for those of you that are new, my name is James, I am a kidney warrior. I was diagnosed with stage five kidney disease and I use diet and lifestyle changes while working very closely with my doctors to slowly improve my health, to reduce the burden on my kidneys, which helped me get up to stage four and then to stage three. And a key, key, key element of all that was my diet. I got to pick what I ate, what I didn't eat, what I passed on, how much I ate. Diet plays such an important role and it's one of the things that you have control of. Now tonight, we've got the person that helps you with the diet when you have kidney disease. It is a renal dietitian, And everyone who knows, everyone who's read the books that I've read, Conquering Kidney Disease or Conquering the Kidney Diet, they know the thing I recommend is work with your doctor, get your blood pressure under control, live a heart healthy lifestyle, but incorporate a renal dietitian. They have the skills, they have the knowledge, and they will give you the tools to eat the best for your own unique situation to help give your kidneys the best chance of keeping up with you, possibly even slowing down the progression of kidney disease and maybe even boosting up your GFR, getting rid of those symptoms and things like that. So life is great again. Now tonight we're doing a live question and answer Q&A. And with us is one of the best renal dietitians you will find anywhere. She has an amazing Facebook group that everyone here should belong to. It's positive. It's supportive. It's got amazing foods that people are making. And they talk about what they've done, what they've tweaked for their own personal diets. Fantastic resource. But please welcome... Renal dietitian Jen Hernandez from PlantPoweredKidneys.com. Hey, Jen. Hey, James. It is so good to be back. It's a little darker. I've got my inside lights on now that uh, our sunlight situation has changed. And I am so excited to get into this new season, wrapping up 2023 with you all, chatting about the holidays, whatever questions you have, I am here to do my best to answer them and support you. So for those of you who maybe are brand new, just learning about me or this channel or our Q and A's, my name is Jen. I am a renal dietitian and I am part of Plant Powered Kidneys. And we focus on helping people do everything they can with their diet and their lifestyle to delay or avoid dialysis entirely by protecting their kidney health. There are so many things that people can do in the early, early stages of CKD when it comes to diet and lifestyle. The medical side, it's not quite there yet. They can do and, and do medication support, but the diet and lifestyle, that's where we come in. And we see so many wonderful results when we support our students, our clients with making the best safest, healthiest diet changes that protect their kidneys and let them do the job that kidneys are supposed to be doing so that they can continue to live really long, enjoyable lives and not be thinking about this fear of dialysis around the corner, something that's going to happen at any minute. When you make diet changes, you will feel so much more confident in what your kidneys are able to do because you're taking care of your kidneys. So if you want to learn more about us, you can find us at our website at plantpoweredkidneys.com. We do have a free full seven day meal plan there for you to check out. You get it for free. And we know it's helped a lot of people kind of get the ball rolling when they learn about adding plants. And then like James mentioned, we do have our free Facebook group, which is another great supportive community that we do more Q and A's like this. We support other students. People post their recipes, their food pictures, all really great things to support you in making healthy lifestyle changes, which really the bottom line is about adding more plants to the diet, hence plant power kidneys. Awesome. All right. We already have some great questions here. We're going to start off with Lynn. She says, I'm stage five renal failure. I was told that my kidneys were not going to get any better. I'd hate to think that is true. 
how would you respond to Lynn? And Lynn, um, are you on dialysis or are you just at stage five pre-dialysis? It'd be great yeah, to know not that. Yeah, non-dialysis, yeah. Um, so the way I'm never going to go against the doctor with what they're, what they're discussing with you about your medical care, because they are the experts when it comes to diagnosing, they are the ones who will diagnose you with your kidney issues, whatever that may be. What I will say is that when we see the labs, the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, that is the measurement of how much your kidneys are filtering toxins and wastes. That number decreases with the stage. And while I can't say for sure, oh, we're going to reverse CKD or things like that, what I do see is that people are able to slow down the kidney disease progression and then even see an improvement in that GFR because their kidneys are able to get more filtered. So they might get restaged into stage four or stage three. It it could even be higher. Everybody's different. There's acute kidney injury. There's AKI, which is, you know, going down to stage five very drastically, but then recuperating full function. There's genetic issues, immune issues. There's a lot of things behind CKD. But again, what I will say is that what we see all the time are kidney patients who are able to see better labs, better control of their blood pressure, their blood sugars, seeing controlled phosphorus, potassium, the sodium and fluids, being able to see better A1Cs for diabetes, better GFR, lower creatinine. We see all of this stuff all the time. So I will say it's definitely possible to have an improvement on your labs, never a guarantee, but definitely possible. And you don't know unless you try. And and try, when I say that, I mean under the safest circumstances. I'm not talking about fad diets or cleanses and pills and potions that they sell you online. I'm talking about healthy, safe nutrition changes that are proven to support kidney function. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. And I ask people, where are you watching from? We have Hong Kong. We have Cape Canaveral, Florida, which, hey, that may end up being your neighbor down in the near future when you move to possibly Florida. We got Ohio all over the United States, all over the world. Awesome there. And um, Lynn did chime in. She's been on dialysis for two years. Um, so your diet, Lynn, is going to be a little more difficult since you are on dialysis, but it never hurts to eat healthy um, mm -hmm. and incorporate more plants into your diet. Yeah, I want to add too, because we know that now um, that she shared that with us. Lynn, uh, hopefully you have a dietitian at your dialysis clinic in the United States. It is mandatory to have a dietitian at each dialysis clinic. And that's actually, in case you don't know me, that's where I spent the beginning of my dietitian career before I started Plant Powered Kidneys, was working with people in dialysis. And I can tell you for certain, there are definitely things you can do to improve your diet for just feeling better, having more energy, having better dialysis treatments, better lab values, which means down the road, just better quality of life, lower complications and risks and issues. So if you can connect with your dietitian, they will give you the most personalized information because they have your medical and health history. They see your labs, they see your medications, they see your dialysis treatments, and they can help work with you on getting all of this information together to formulate a plan plan to formulate maybe a list of foods that are better for you that makes sense for all of those pieces of the puzzle that we talk about. And she says, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome, Lynn. And we got several people from Canada. Hey, hi to my neighbors to the north. I'm in Detroit, <laughs> Michigan. My kids and I, every couple weeks, hop on over to Ontario. We love the candy over there because it's, it's much, much better than the United States. And I love going over there and eating at the restaurants because the food, oh, it's it's closer to Europe. And I find it doesn't have all those additives in it. And I love going over there. All right. We have, uh, Sue has a question. This is a, I've actually heard this question before from others. I was just talking to my wife earlier today about a similar situation. Her CKD was caused by chemo and cancer. And her fear is that if her cancer returns, do you know, is it possible to still get chemo treatment with CKD? Well, as a dietitian, that's a bit out of my scope. That would be something to talk with your nephrologist about, with your oncologist, maybe your primary physician, um, but your specialist physicians should give you a better insight into what that looks like. 
I can tell you that I've worked with patients who have had cancer, either a history of or a, a active cancer plus CKD. And so there are some things that we do look at to kind of balance both of those things. We have to set a list of priorities on what's important and what's really kind of the biggest issue that we need to focus on. So those would be some of the things I'd be looking at. But when it comes to that specific question, unfortunately, it's a bit out of my scope of, of what I would be able to address. And Lynn did chime in. She does have a dietitian at the center where she gets her dialysis. That's great. That is really good. And I understand, what, like, I know what she's saying when I have to figure it out for myself. I will tell you guys, and this is not saying, oh, it's fine for them to be like this, but dietitians in the clinics, we cover literally hundreds of patients. And so if you want attention from your dietitian, you definitely want to make it known that you want to speak with them and ask them direct questions about what you're particularly interested in. Don't say, just make me a meal plan because they don't have the time for that. Unfortunately, it's they're very, very swamped. And they have, I, I remember those days, it was very hard, but the patients that wanted my time and wanted to make changes, I was more than excited to be able to sit down and talk with them more about the things that they wanted to do. So maybe just um, just speaking with them a little bit more directly about what you're looking for, asking them specific questions about maybe certain foods or maybe guidelines. Um, I know dialysis centers also give a lot of handouts. So maybe going through and asking them to like work with you and mark foods out or circle certain foods that should be better for you. As long as you're showing that you're putting in that work, your dietitian will also hopefully be matching you in that effort. Perfect. All righty, I have one here. I marked it. Where did I put it now? Um, ah, this is a good one. What if you don't like beans or nuts? And oh my goodness, I cannot imagine not liking nuts. Um, what are some other options? Now, she, she says she's stage 3A, which is fantastic. That's, that's mm -hmm. great kidney function still. And her labs are good, and there's no protein in the urine. So someone who's trying to eat more plant-based that doesn't like beans or nuts, what are some, I'm guessing, options for protein and replacements for those items? Yeah. Well, like you said, you know, stage 3A, that is an early, mild stage of CKD. So there's actually a lot of room for even more variety in the diet. There's, I've heard a lot of our, our students and our clients say, oh, well, my doctor says I can eat whatever I want because I'm stage three. And it's like, oh, I know what you're getting at, but that's not really the case. Because when people hear, oh, I can eat anything, it's like, all right, which drive-thru are we going to hit next? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about there's not going to be supreme restrictions or limitations like somebody who's stage five who would need to be really careful with their potassium level or who would need to be really careful with their protein level. So yeah, it's great being aware of CKD at an earlier stage. This is like your, this is your early opportunity. This is the silver lining of like, hey, you have a chance to really take care of yourself so it doesn't decline, it doesn't get worse. So in those cases, kind of circling to this topic about nuts and beans, that's totally fine. If you don't like foods, even if they're like healthy foods, it doesn't mean you have to have them. I will say that I encourage you to continue to try them in different recipes, in different ways, with different spices and flavors, because it could just be that you didn't like a certain recipe in the way it was prepared. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of kidney beans, but when I make chili, I'll use like pinto beans and black beans. So I just do a swap for the beans that I do like. Kidney beans aren't my thing. And that's totally fine. I'm not going to force myself to eat them just because people say that they're good or you, you know, you should eat them. So it's about finding the foods that you do like and then incorporating those. Now, if you're really like, nope, great, thanks, still not going to happen. That's okay, too. That's totally fine. Um, what I would look at is probably including some more of the soy category. So maybe some tempeh, some tofu, some edamame, even some soy milk to get other plant protein sources. And you don't have to do it all the time every day, but just starting to incorporate them every now and then can be really, really helpful because plant proteins have been shown to have a better, uh, have a lower acid production for the kidneys compared to animal proteins. And mo 
most often when these types of proteins are used, they're usually encompassed with a variety of vegetables or, you know, sometimes fruits, but they just tend to be involved with a more plant heavy meal anyway. So I would suggest trying and playing around with some of those options to see if you like those. I'll tell you when I first tried tofu, it was disgusting. I had it in high school and I was like, nope, never ever. But it came off of a buffet line that probably had been sitting there way too long that I probably shouldn't have had it anyway. <laughs> and it was just really chewy and gummy and the flavor was weird. But now, now I love tofu and I learn how to cook with it and use it in a way that I really enjoy so that I'm getting the benefit. And it's not like that one thing, that one event, just like shut me down from it forever. I mean, granted that was X number of years ago, but it was, you know, it was enough for, I was like, no tofu for quite a while. <laughs> Jen, you're going to be very proud of me because I, I, you've recommended so many things and I try them and I bet you people in the audience know, oh, I think I know what Jane's going to say. He finally tried. I, I'm waiting. <laughs> I actually was able to incorporate mushrooms Dang. into some stir fry and I actually enjoyed it. Okay, the key word here, people, is that there's enjoyment, not force feeding. So you really yes. did, you really enjoyed it. Yeah, what I, I and I think what the key was is I sliced them very, very thin, mm -hmm. so that um, it wasn't a lot of the flavor all at once. Mm -hmm. And I added them on I think it was last Thursday, and then on Saturday night I put even more into the stir fry I was making. I had I. I I made like a Frankenstein's monster stir fry. I was putting all sorts of stuff in like some uh, <laughs> noodles. I was like, let's add some noodles in here and stuff, more yeah. mushrooms. And I actually enjoyed it. And my kids noticed, they're like, dad, you're eating mushrooms. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to tell Jen next week. So oh. I encourage you guys out there, even if you don't like something, try it. Maybe the different way you, you, you prepare it or a different thing that it's mixed in with. I have discovered so many things in the last five years that I never would have tried. I was like, no, don't like them, don't want them. Mm -hmm. And I found ways to add them and enjoy them. Yeah, and that's that's the greatest thing about it too. I mean, you know what, James? It's I don't know how many years we've been doing this now, but I will say that is probably our biggest milestone so far. And I am so proud of you. <laughs> I tried them so many times and it just hasn't worked. Yeah. But now I found how to do it. And I'm like, yeah. If I save the day once again. <laughs> All right. Here's a question from Debbie. Um, she's looking for um, foods that help when you have anemia. She's looking to boost her iron. And we've had shows about this in the past. Yeah, we sure have. We have quite a few resources um, on plant powered kidneys. I have several articles about how to add iron foods to your diet, including making iron water with. Oh, I got a. Oh, you get the it. fish? I'm getting that. Well, mine's a leaf. I got the leaf version. But this is this bad boy right here. This is the Lucky Iron Leaf. And here's the here's the packaging. Um, this is a little cast iron leaf that you add to water. And we do have a video of it on YouTube, definitely on Instagram, well, probably on Instagram and Facebook, I want to say. Definitely on YouTube, we have a video of how to use this. But you add it to water and it actually infuses iron into the water. So you're making kind of like your own iron supplement in the form of a pitcher of water. And then you can use that water to cook with, to drink however you want to use the water, but it actually adds iron. So this is one of my favorite tools. I think it's just so easy to use and you can use it so many times over and over. I think it lasts like five years with consistent use. So that for one is a great option to add iron to your diet. Another option is to look at, sorry, um, who is, I can't remember the name of Oh, Chandler. Sorry, Chandler. Um, beans, <laughs> beans and lentils. They're, those are a great source of iron. And there's even some dark leafy greens. Broccoli has iron. We don't actually need so much iron in the diet. Um, if for like higher needs, it's up to like 18 milligrams. But you don't need to go that high or higher. Sometimes the question is, are you eating or drinking something that's not helping or preventing you from getting the iron in? So for example, right now I'm drinking my favorite peppermint tea 
tea can actually prevent iron from being absorbed. So I wouldn't drink my tea with an iron rich meal that I was having because that would prevent that absorption. But I could eat something with vitamin C like bell peppers or strawberries and the vitamin C helps the iron get absorbed. So there are some things that you can do in those meal pairings and the food pairings to help the iron actually get absorbed and utilized. Um, Another thing to think about too is, and this gets a bit more into the medical side and really talking with your healthcare provider about this, but sometimes there are other metabolic factors going on that are preventing. So you might have a deficiency in something that is actually preventing the iron from being absorbed or even utilized. So if you try everything, if you're doing your food tracking and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting so much iron in, I'm getting my vitamin C in, I'm not drinking coffee or tea with these meals. So I, I'm not stopping that absorption, but still it's not working really well. It could be more on the medical side because again, CKD kidneys are in part responsible to help with the iron management in the body and prevent anemia. And if the kidneys aren't working, that's why there's a higher risk of anemia. So again, if you're doing a lot of these dietary things and it's not moving the needle, talk with your healthcare provider about other things that might be causing the situation to not be improved uh, because there are medical treatments as well. There's there, and we, um, with a lot of clients and patients and students that there's so much fear around all types of food because there's this concern for potassium, there's a concern for phosphorus, there's a concern for protein, for sodium, sometimes for carbohydrates. And so oftentimes I find that people are just cutting back so much and that causes unintentional weight loss, meaning you don't want to lose weight, but you're just not eating enough and therefore the weight just keeps falling off. And so this is where more of the education part comes in because it's really important to understand all of the foods that can be enjoyed with a renal diet. And so many of them we've talked about, like, we've talked about an infinite amount here about all the foods that can be enjoyed. It's just more so understanding about those things like potassium, sodium, et cetera. So the first step I would say, because you're not, you're probably not going to go right from like the salads to everything, but I would say with those salads, adding some extra healthy fats could be a great option. And the safest healthy fat could be extra olive oil or avocado oil on the dressing. So not just more of the, the bottle dressing if you're using that, but literally like a nice little splash of just extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, something like that, because it has quite a bit of calories in smaller amounts. So a little can go a longer way. You can also, if you do like nuts or seeds or beans, I feel like I'm going to be picking on Chandler. <laughs> Because it is really, it is a great opportunity to add more calories because again, nuts are in that similar realm that a small amount will provide several hundred calories. It doesn't take a lot. So um, I would say that that would be some of the biggest things that I would look at. And then um, beyond that, it, it really goes into learning and understanding more about what's going on. And this is where I would say talking with the doctor about getting a referral to a dietitian because even that unintentional weight loss, that could be a referral indicator for a dietitian. So just saying, I need to see a dietitian. I'm losing weight. I know it's not good for me. I don't feel good. I don't have good energy. And talking with your doctor about getting that referral. And if your doctor doesn't have anybody, they don't know of anybody, you don't have to go through your doctor initially. You can go connect directly with the dietitian, and then your dietitian may be able to work through and connect with your doctor about that referral information if that's what you need, if you're using insurance. Um, but there's definitely a lot of options. And I mean, James, I know you've talked about how it was kind of like night and day for you when you worked with a dietitian compared to before. Oh, by far. Without a dietitian, it's like being lost in the woods and you're just randomly walking, trying to get someplace. It's scary. It's confusing. Um, and then I, I started working with a dietitian and I was so worried that it would be, okay, stop all this today. Mm -hmm. But my dietitian worked with me. She said, okay, we're going to wean you off the drive through window first. <laughs> and sodas was easy. I stopped sodas instantly. But she said, we're going to wean you off of the uh, fast food. She gave me some alternatives that were easy to make at home. And then she kept talking to me, learning what I liked, what my habits were, 
even my mm -hmm. bad habits and she found solutions for me and then i started discovering so and the dietitians i talked to here like you i get more and more ideas a dietitian to me is the key because they're helping we all could eat better everyone could use it my kids could use it my wife could use it no one needs all this heavy processed bad foods that were were being provided so easily in our um, environment and a dietitian gives you the right tools they work with you and they they make everything easy to you're not afraid and all of a sudden i enjoy making food my biggest challenge now is oh i gotta clean up all those pots and things that i i use or, or do i have everything that i need but i actually now love making my own meals i not only for the flavors but now the appearance and everything. I want it to look cool. So my kids are like, ooh, what did daddy make us now? Yeah, the using more plants into our into our meals and our food and everything just like really changes the perspective because it looks so bright and colorful and flavorful compared to the traditional, you know, let's say white chicken breast and then potatoes or rice and then maybe a side of greens, but it's just a lot more bland. But adding more vegetables, you add more color, you add more interest. So it can be a much more enjoyable meal from start to finish. But yes, the dishes are definitely something to keep on top of. Yep. All right, here's a, a great question. Um, the person says, Jen, I'm actually scared, which is very common. Um, you know, I was scared many times throughout my five years so far with kidney disease. Her doctor told her that her potassium is 5.3, so it's on the higher side, and wants her to lower it. What are some ways that she could use her diet to help lower her potassium? Oh, well, I know Ida. Dear Ida, I am so happy that you're on tonight and that we're connecting. Um, I... <sighs> The thing with the high potassium is when your doctor is telling you you have high potassium, I would throw back, <laughs> I would throw back a question to them to say, okay, what's causing that? Ask them what is causing my high potassium? And the answer cannot just be, oh, it's because of kidney disease. No, we need to dive deeper. We need to look into medical history. We need to look at your nutrition. We need to look at your labs. We need to look at your medication. We need to look at any other um, health concerns like diabetes or gut issues. There's a lot of things that can cause issues with potassium. And just to say your potassium is high, cut back on potassium, that might not actually be the solution. And what we see very often are people who will be told this, they have a slightly high potassium, they're told to cut back on potassium, and then their labs don't change at all because it's not just the diet that's involved with this potassium balance. So again, go back to the doctor and say, okay, what could be causing this high potassium? And if they do say it's got to be your diet, it's definitely your diet, whatever, that is again, another window of opportunity for you to say, okay, can you get me a referral to a dietitian then? Because obviously diet is a problem and I need professional help with this to get this taken care of. And they should be connecting you with the dietitian because we will need to go into your food records. We'll have to track things and look at your numbers with you. And then we'll still do a review of your medication, your medical history, your gut health, all of these other things that we will also determine what is that root cause of the high potassium, not just kidney disease. So first I would say definitely go back, talk with your doctor about getting to the root of it and then seeing about working with a dietitian one-on-one -on -one to get more information. If you do, you know, everything, all, all the checks are, or all the, the checklist is done and it's definitely, you need to follow a low potassium diet, which some people do. You can focus on more volume of lower potassium foods. So a low potassium diet is anywhere from 2000 to 3000 milligrams of potassium per day, which I know some people think like, wow, that's still a lot because it kind of is, but potassium is found in a lot of different foods. So you might have to be careful with, again, the allowance that you have. And that's where tracking really comes uh, to be a really, really big help. So tracking to see exactly how much potassium you're eating will give you, your doctor, your dietitian, so much more insight into what your labs are telling you as well. All right, we have a few people saying that they've had some audio issues. It may be YouTube in some areas. 
I checked everything here and it's all working fine, but the broadcast will be over soon and you can go back and watch it. And that may take care of the audio issues mm-hmm. for those that are experienced something. Now we are at the, we are at the top of the, uh, there are the end of our time, but I have one more question. I like to squeeze in. This is a good one from Evelyn. She says, where can I find that diet plan that you mentioned earlier? So if you go to plantpoweredkidneys.com and then look under our resources tab, that's where we have, we have a free meal plan. We have some other paid meal plans, but I always say, Hey, get the free one. See, get an idea of what we do. If if it's something that you would like to use, many people like to use that meal plan. It actually provides, I don't know the exact number. I want to say like 13 or 14 recipes. It's quite a bit. So you could actually use those recipes for quite a while and just see how you feel. See if that makes sense for you. Um, there, We also provide a lot of information along with that meal plan so that you do feel like you're getting a little bit more education with it. Um, so yeah, I would say go check that out and then, you know, Plant Powered Kidneys is around to support you. Yep, and I hope to see so many of you in the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. I don't chime in that often. Um, but when I see especially good recipes or someone's take took a picture of something they made, oh, I love to chime in then because there are so many amazing combinations and ideas that people are coming up with. And that creativity just helps me have more variety and love looking forward to mealtime. <laughs> As many of you can see, I love mealtime a little too much. I gotta, I'm cutting back on those calories. <laughs> but thank you so much, Jen, for, for being here tonight with us. And I wanna encourage everyone, the links to the Plant Powered Kidneys website as well as Facebook group are down in the show notes below the video. Just click the little more button and you'll see them there. It's great if you give the video a thumbs up. Um, That helps YouTube know, hey, this is good content. Let's share it with more people who are looking to learn more about kidney disease and the renal diet. Um, I will be back here in two nights with Dr. Rosansky. He's going to talk about the latest national kidney, uh, international kidney recommendations for managing kidney disease. I've got two more shows I still got to schedule for this month. So November is going to be a great month. And then Jen will be here again in December doing a live Q and a thank mm-hmm. you so much, Jen. And thank us. Thank all of you for being here with us and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye everyone.